Okay. So neural processing is inherently noisy, so when making a decision, people often have a sense of confidence. And confidence is not only a subjective feeling that arises with a decision, it often influences one's behavior. For example, in this recapture task, if you feel confident about the word presented here, you might just type in your word and then hit enter. But if you feel unconfident, I think that you might hit the reload button to get a new word. And it is still an open question how human observers compute confidence when they are asked about it. And it's often postulated that confidence tracks the um, probability a decision is correct, meaning the posterior probability of the chosen category. And we call this idea Bayesian confidence hypothesis. So for example, in a simple to alternative orientation discrimination task, based on the stimulus as here, observers can compute the posterior that the stimulus is a left tilted or a right tilted gradient. And confidence increase with um, the posterior of the chosen probability. And even though Bayesian confidence hypothesis is often considered to be the framework to describe the confidence report in a two-choice task, it is very often that Bayesian hypothesis is not rigorously tested with alternative models. And sometimes it's because it's very difficult to distinguish Bayesian model from uh, the other models. And while two-choice task is a popular experimental protocol, in daily life, we often face decision involving multiple options. For example, uh, to identify which traffic light is on or to pick your favorite item from the food menu. And in addition, in a, in a task with multiple alternatives, how to relate confidence to the posterior probability is more complex when there are only two options. And this gives us an opportunity to distinguish the Bayesian model from the other models. In this study, we focus on a three-choice decision task, and we hypothesize three different models of confidence report. The MAX model uh, follows Bayesian confidence hypothesis, here S representing the stimulus and C representing the category, and confidence reflects the probability that the decision is correct. So it's the maximum value of the posterior. In the difference model, we assume that confidence is not only determined by the chosen category, but influenced by the unchosen category. So confidence is modeled as the difference between the best and the second best option. It's also possible that confidence depends on the entire posterior distribution. And we use entropy to describe the spread of the posterior distribution. A distribution with high entropy is flat and it leads to low confidence, and a distribution um, with low entropy is more concentrated to one choice and it leads to high confidence. So here at the bottom are two hypothetical examples uh, for the posterior in under a three-choice task. The max model predicts higher confidence for the distribution at the right because it picks at a higher value. The difference model, in contrary, predicts that the distribution at the left leads to higher confidence because the best option is more distinguishable from the best alternative. And the entropy model predicts that the distribution at the right leads to higher confidence because the entropy is lower. And what will happen if we just go back to the two-choice task? Even though the three models have um, different formulation, but under the constraint that the two posterior have to sum up to one. So we can easily rewrite the difference model and the entropy model to be the function um, of the probability of the chosen category. So eventually the three model just collapses as one because they all depend on the same single number and they are not distinguishable. So here uh, we use a new task to study, to study confidence in a three-choice task. Let's see whether this works. Okay. So in each trial, uh, we present observer three groups of colored dots, and we tell observer that this is a bird-eye view of three groups of tourists, and the people in the same group all wear a um, T-shirt in the same color. 
In each trial, there is one black dot. This is a target. This is a person from one of the three group, but we don't know the color of his or her T-shirt. And first, observers have to report which group they think this person belongs to. Okay. I think we can do one practice trial here. So when I count to three, please shout out the color of the group that you want to choose, okay? One, two, three. Blue. Wonderful. <laughs> so let's choose blue. And after that, observer report their confidence level by four button presses. I think that we are very confident here. Let's do one more trial, okay? Shout out the color, okay? One, two, three. Oh, okay. Maybe some people say green, and I feel that you're not confident. Maybe I'll choose this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you know the task. So in the first experiment, we tested four conditions. The three groups are Gaussians. They are equally spaced and aligned vertically but they're at different horizontal locations. In the first two conditions, the three groups are evenly spaced, but with different step size. In the last two conditions, the middle group is closer to either to the left or to the right. And to fit the data, all the model assume that observers will compute the posterior distribution based on the stimuli they saw. And then all the models use the same decision rule to categorize the group. They simply pick uh, the group with the highest posterior. And the models only differed in how confidence is reported. And because the confidence rate out from the posterior distribution is a continuous variable, so uh, we fit three criteria as three parameters to map this continuous variable to four uh, button presses. So given the stimulus, in a trial and the criteria, we can compute the joint probability of the decision and the confidence report. And there are 12 combinations in total. But without uh, any noise, uh, the model's behavior is deterministic. So we let the response to be uh, probabilistic by injecting noise. We assume that observers uh, perform a noise inference. So noise is injected in the posterior distribution. So these are the three parameters in the model, including criteria, the strength of noise, and we also included a one uh, left trait. We fit the model by maximizing the likelihood of the data set. And we use an optimization algorithm developed in our lab. And if you're interested in this algorithm, you can go to the poster session uh, happening right now. This poster by Azerby and Ma. <laughs> So here are the data. The top row are the stimulus distribution presented to the observers. And the bottom row is the confidence report, with four representing very confident. And in order to collect the data more efficiently, we constrain the target dot to be positioned in a range uh, where we know that the models are more distinguishable. Uh, so we can see that when the three groups are equally spaced, the confidence are very high when the target are at the far left or at the far right and confidence decrease moving toward to the center, and then it goes up higher again when it's at the center of the middle group. Okay? And this pattern is more pronounced when the three distributions are um, spaced far apart. When the middle distribution is close to the left, confidence report is high at the right, and then it goes down. And it maintains quite low until the center of the left, left distribution. And the fourth condition is just a flip version of the third one. Here I plot the data with a model fit. The model fit is a blue curve. We can see that the entropy model is not a good fit to the data. We can see clear deviations in all four conditions. Max model generally captures the data, but with some mismatch, for example, here, uh, when the three groups are asymmetric distributed, you can see that the model predicted that there's a dip here and confidence go up, but the data show that the confidence is very low for the entire range. Here is the fit of the difference model. The diff model seems to provide a better fit compared to the other two models. We compare the AIC score between the entropy and the difference model. The x-axis is individual subjects, y-axis is the AIC score of the entropy model minus the AIC score of the difference model. And entropy model have um, 
higher AIC score across all individuals, indicating that diff model is a better model. When we compare the max model and the diff model, again, we found that the diff model outperformed the max model. So in the next experiment, we want to see whether this finding can be extended to other stimulus configuration. So here, the three groups are still Gaussians, but they are positioned in a two-dimensional space. In the first two conditions, the centers form an equilateral triangle, but with different spacing. And the last two conditions are, again, asymmetric, uh, with one group closer to the other. Here, we visualize the confidence report as a function of a target position with a heat map, with yellow representing high confidence and blue representing low confidence. In the first two conditions, we can see the confidence is very low in the middle of the three distribution, and it gets higher when the target dot moves toward each one of the group's center. And the confidence is overall higher if the three groups are far apart than when it's very close. In the last two conditions, confidence is uh, very low uh, when the target is at the side where two groups cluster together. And confidence is high when the target is positioned close to the isolated group. Here we uh, use the best fit parameter to recover the model predictions. We can see, again, there are some difference between the entropy model and the data. For example, in the first two conditions, the model predict there are some uh, convex contour on the heat map, but we did not set that in the, in the data. The two bottom rows are the max model and the difference model. The differences between these two models are more subtle, but we can see that there is some subtle differences in the first two condition. And for the asymmetric condition, it seems that in the difference model, the low confidence blue region is more extended to one side. And, but it's more local for the max model. When comparing the AIC score, again, we found that difference model outperformed the entropy model. And difference model outperformed the max model. So just to conclude, we found the confidence report is best explained by difference model. And confidence depends on the next best option in the decision. So the results might imply that when phasing multiple options, observers seem to make a decision between the top two options. And this, in some way, makes sense to our, or at least my, daily experience. Sometimes when we try to order the food in the restaurant, we kind of end up hesitating between the two items that we want the most. And future studies are required to test whether this implication is true and, how, and what would happen if there are even more than three options. And confidence does not always reflect the probability that a decision is correct, and it's important to test the Bayesian model against other models. And if you are interested in, in this topic, you can go to check another poster from our lab by Eller and Dennison, uh, presumably happening now. And they tested Bayesian confidence hypothesis in experiment manipulating both sensory and attentional uncertainty. And currently, we are using the same protocol to study uh, confidence in larger population with crowdsourcing. And also, we are investigating whether, by using different variable instruction, we can push observers' confidence report to one or to the other model. Thank you for your attention.